Welcome back, Rick Studio. We're here in uh, my living room with Mark Spencer, and we're talking about Logic Pro 10. Actually, it's a continuation of last week's episode where you made that spooky house. Yes, and it so is. So we can it do is. a Logic with it. Yes, yes. So I have a relatively new uh, Logic Pro 10 tutorial out, and mm -hmm. um, it's about scoring music and sound effects right. to, to excellent, picture. Excellent. And this is kind of an example of the kind of things you can do. It's not part of the tutorial. It's a very separate thing, but it's a lot of fun. So as you mentioned last week, we made this haunted house intro by using a couple of stills. So I, I took that movie out of Final Cut and brought it into Logic. So if we take a look here in Logic, here's the movie. And when I imported it, I included the temp track. So this is the temp track a mix down of the different Apple loops that we added in Final Cut Pro. And you can see it's muted because I'm not really interested in it, but we have it here. And then I've added my own uh, set of tracks here. I'll play it first and then we'll talk through them a little bit. All right, so it's be very pretentious yeah. and you wonder what that banging is all about. Right, right. So I'm gonna close the movie, we don't need that. We can always get it back by double clicking over here in the little movie window. So I already told you this first track is the temp track. We don't really care about that. This storm track is actually a track stack. And if I open it, we can see the exact same Apple loops that we had in Final Cut. And the way I got those is in the loops browser, just O will open it up here. If we go to loops browser and search in a loops browser, uh, we can find all of those same things. I think I looked under Thunder uh, in, in Final Cut and the exact same loops are here. Yep. So it's just great that you've got the same availability of those loops in Final Cut and in Logic, mm -hmm. you can grab them. So I just basically rebuilt that really quickly and changed the timing a little bit. Then what I did is I added this Haunted Drone, which is an Alchemy Synth software right. instrument with, uh, with one of its presets applied. And I just went through and found something that I thought that was interesting. And you can play it yourself. I just played it with, I had a plugged in MIDI keyboard, mm -hmm. but even if you use musical typing, which Command K will bring that up, and if you just hit a key, you'll hear it kind of ramp up. Here's your haunted drone. Exactly, yeah. So you can just hit a key and you hear what that sounds like. So this is all I did to record that sound, is press a key or a couple keys. Uh, the same thing with these hits, they're these loud, in fact, let me solo so we can hear those hits. So that's be some mystery banging inside the house right. there. Right. And again, you can see, you could see actually while I was playing at the, the keys that I had hit there, so I can tap that here. Yeah. So real easy to make a variety of really interesting sound Soundscape, effects yeah. quickly. Uh, and then the last one here, I'll solo this uh, emergence. This is one of the drummer tracks, but the funny thing is I took this drummer track and then I applied a, um, a cinematic ambient drone to the drummer track. So rather than have, if it is a drummer track, if I open up the editor, it's fully edited as one of these drummer track. I took off everything except for the kick, but I changed the kick. And it's really kind of odd creepy yeah. sound. So just a lot of fun manipulating different sounds. So yeah. where am I going with this? So here's the deal. Sometimes, and you've talked about this recently, uh, different sounds will interfere with each other. Yeah. They may be at the same frequency yeah. and they get muddied in the mix. And one option that, that you've talked about is you can use EQ to uh, you know, change the frequency or remove certain frequencies or boost certain frequencies. Yeah. Yeah. So that pulls them out. But another option is a process called uh, side chaining or mm -hmm. making a side chain. And what that does is, the way I think of about it coming from motion graphics is a link parameter in motion. Mm -hmm. And in motion, a link parameter will link two different parameters of two objects together. Right. So maybe the, the rotation of a dial. Will affect the scale of something the else. Yeah, the scale of something else. Exactly. So the same idea in audio. So what I want to do is when these hits come in, they're kind of being overwhelmed by the thunder of the storm. So, um, you know, you hear both at the same time. Right. So I'd love it if the thunder would get quieter every time we hear those hits. Now, of course, you can use automation. You can tap A and go in and use automation in order to go through and set basically keyframes to have it dip each time. But side chaining will do this automatically, and it's great when you have many, many, many times you want to make a change. Save a lot of mouse clicks. Yeah, if you want to trigger a change. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to select the track that I want to stand out, okay, that I'm going to want to drive this 
behavior. In other words, I want these hits to drive a change in the thunder. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to use a send and I'm going to send it to an open bus. So I'll choose this one, bus 12. You can choose any of the open buses here. So I'm sending the output to this bus and you set the volume here on this tiny dial. But rather than trying to drag it on, if you option click it, it'll set it to exactly zero, which is the current volume level mm -hmm. that will send out to that bus. Now, I don't also want it to be sent uh, to stereo out. I actually want to turn this to no output. So it's just going to the send right now. Kind of think of that sound being parked off to the side for a minute, okay? It'll still play. I mean, if we play, we'll still hear it. But we have the ability to use it now. So now I'm going to go to this storm. And I can go to the whole thing or I can go to just this particular track, but I'll, I'll apply it to the whole thing. And I'm going to add a compressor to this. So under audio effects in the uh, slot here, I'm going to add a dynamics compressor. Because what I want to do is have that storm be compressed down every time we hear these loud bangs, okay? So what I'm going to do is up here where it says side chain, I'm going to choose that same bus 12. And we can see right there it says hits. Yep. So those hits are being routed into the compressor. I'll change to a graph view so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to do something fairly dramatic here. First, I'm going to turn auto gain off. Otherwise, it's going to boost the signal up quite, quite high, which I don't want. Um, I'm going to bring the threshold down so it includes more of the signal. Bring it way down. And I'm going to crank the ratio way up. That's a little too low on the threshold. And let's play it through now and watch the graph. Look at that. Now you see how that dropped? Yeah. Right when that hit came in, it made the thunder pretty much disappear, which is a little too strong, but I wanted to you know, make a point so you could really see it happen. And then the thunder slowly crawls up again. And you can determine how quickly this kicks in and how long it takes to release with the attack and release. I really want it to kick in right away. And I want it to release quite quickly too. I probably don't want it to be quite so intense. So I'll drop the ratio a little bit and maybe bump up the threshold where it kicks in. Mm -hmm. So that's with it on and if I turn it off, see that white line stays high there yeah so wherever these now now that we have that enabled every time that there's one of these hits it's going to drop down the thunder and because we didn't do it with keyframes it will always work so if we edit these MIDI events where these hits are for instance maybe I want this one to come in earlier you know be a little uh, lower yeah on that no scale. matter where I where no matter where I move these the thunder will always drop down at that point So it's very easy to manipulate it after the fact. In fact, I might move these to spread them outside the main burst of thunder so it doesn't affect the main burst of the thunder. So it's just one example in a in kind of a sound design way. Um, a lot of musicians will use this in order to make a, a bass really track with drum hits, for instance, uh, or make a synth really pop. So right. you can just bring out different instruments in the midst. So the whole idea of sign chaining to me is fascinating, and it, it makes sense to me just from motion graphics idea of tying different parameters. Well, I, I noticed you didn't send it to an output; you sent it just to a bus, and then the compressor that you applied. Um, yeah, then it was, it was, was uh, the compressor side chained that particular bus you had assigned to. Right, and but then the whole thing sent to the out right. from there. Right. Yeah, and then you can choose as many. You could put the whole thing on the end, on the stereo output, but you can go in and drill down specifically. And not every effect can be side-chained, but a noise gate, a compressor, and many other effects. So it's, it's open to experimentation to see how you want it. In fact, you can have the sound of an instrument change dramatically based on when you hear another sound or hmm. another instrument. So it's a world of possibilities. But I think it's really interesting in kind of a, a sound for picture context. Wow, that's pretty cool. Did you find that? Um, did you just kind of noodling around and discover that? Just noodling or? around, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right.
Fantastic. Um, so I really like how your focus on Logic is for movie creation and not just, you know, there's so many, so many tutorials out there on music and there's really good ones out there, but I like how you're focusing it out on, you know, yeah, I storytelling. Yeah, I connect it with Final Cut Pro yeah. and storytelling, yeah. exactly. Which is why you want to check out his yeah. Logic tutorial. It's, it's fantastic if you, you want to uh, score your own movies. Thanks, Mark. That was awesome. So thank you for watching Mac Week Studio and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.